What's up guys, Danielle here, NeutralSupport.net. So last time I talked to you about building a toolkit from scratch and we talked about the tool pyramid where you have your basic tools on the bottom, your bike specific tools, your specialty tools, and you kind of build up in a tiered fashion to get exactly what you want. Now sometimes that can be expensive or maybe it just doesn't fit into your plan. So today we're going the other direction. Today I'm gonna to walk you through the Union Pro Kit just as an example of buying a kit instead of building your toolkit. The other cool thing about the Pro Kit is it came with a box, but supposedly it has extra space in case you wanna add more specialty tools that didn't come with the kit. Cause we all know, and we talked about kits all being kind of a compromise. So I actually haven't even unpackaged the tools in this yet because I wanna do that with you. So let's go. So this is the Union Pro Kit box. It comes out of its cardboard box just like this. comes with this nifty book in case you forgot how to do bicycle mechanics while you were waiting for your toolkit and you got real rusty. You can read about it. These are actually really nice books. So if you do need books for somebody or a new employee or you feel like you need a little bit of reference material, you know makes some cool bike mechanics reference material. So there's a flip out for the box. There's a hanging pallet. And then all of the tools are inside in this box. So we're gonna get them all out and see what we got. So here's the contents of the toolkit. Some of the stuff, very good. Some of the stuff, definitely a compromise. So some interesting choices to consider. For example, no chain whip, instead they use this tool. So you have the basically prongs that fit into the cassette as opposed to a chain whip, which some people prefer it, so maybe not a compromise for everyone. I'm used to using a chain whip, so this will be a different experience for me. This hammer may be the nicest thing in this whole kit, I, but it's kind of, I'm joking, but it is a really nice hammer. It's big, meaty, heavy, and it has a sand in it, if you can hear it. It's like a maraca. Seems like it'll be a decent hammer. Uh, plastic or nylon ends so you don't damage anything. So that actually seems really good. We've got things like this magnetic Shimano tool. Uh, so it's a 13 if you want, but that is the uh, Shimano lock ring size. So they have that tool for you. They have just the box wrenches that you probably need and they do double ended. So to save on space, you've got a 13 and a 15 combined, basically every size on a double. And so they did include this tool, which is a deep 10 and a deep eight. This is great for those disc brake nuts. So you have a an eight, a regular box eight. So you can see the, the difference there. So when you're doing those disc brake hose lock nuts, this is actually really nice. Now this kit doesn't have anything else. It does not a bleed kit doesn't have anything to do hoses, so that's all stuff that you would have to do separate. So that would be, you know, a bike specialty tool like we talked about. You have a nice little set of tweezers, which is an interesting, I've never had a set of tweezers in a toolkit, but I thought maybe this was an interesting thing. Try to grab a cable out of a frame or something like that. I'm glad that they included calipers that aren't digital. So some people laugh at this style of caliper because it's kind of like the sort of the dummy caliper. It won't be long now until your no dial telephones are ready to serve you. It's easy to read. It's not as accurate as a digital caliper, but the type of measurements that you're doing in a bike environment, you just need to know basically a round number. Knowing a specific decimal point is not as important when you're trying to determine like inch and an eighth, just open it up. The other problem that I have with digital calipers is temperature wise, those batteries die really quick and the ink screens don't like to work when it's under about 50 degrees outside. So we have the standard screwdrivers. So a, what I assume is Phillips head. Yes, a PH1. So PH1, a flat head, and another smaller flat head. Now, I do prefer to have a GIS screwdriver instead of just a regular Phillips head. And this is a one instead of a two. It doesn't appear that they put a two in this kit, which is also interesting because the one is usually a little small for some stuff, like 
this would definitely strip out some of the limit screws and things like that. So I'll be supplementing with my own screwdriver, but these have really nice rubberized handles. They're very nice. We have a tape measure. Feels a lot like the Park Tool small blue tape measure, just a normal one. We have both kinds of cassette tools, which also seems interesting to me because I haven't had trouble using this style of cassette tool on a through axle bike. I've never actually had a through axle specific cassette tool on hand to do anything. So I've never had an issue just using a tool that doesn't have a guide. So I do think it's interesting that in this travel kit, they would include two so that you could have one that has a through axle and one that doesn't. It seems kind of redundant to me since you don't really need either of these to make this tool work. They included this little baggie of Allen keys or hex keys that kind of seems very similar to the ones that come with like your furniture. The only difference is that the four and the five have a ball end, which I do think would be, well, and the three. There we go. The three, four, and five have a ball end. These are just, you know, cheap metal Allen keys, as far as I can tell. They're kind of short, not really what you're used to using. I don't think that I would probably use them very much, but the fact that they have a ball end is nice for those off camber, like you can't really get to that area to drive a bolt in. They did include this entire set of two mil all the way to 10 mil hex P handle, which are really nice, like incredibly nice in comparison to these. And they have the nice grip here, but none of them have the ball end. So I think that these were an addition so that when you needed a ball end or you needed something smaller, you did have it because the P handles are super nice. They did include a chain checker, always good to have. They have the set of normal, normal style pliers, nice handles. They have a quick link tool to get quick links apart. It actually is only a removal tool. So it's kind of like the KMC one where they have two tools, one that puts it on and one that takes it off. So there's definitely things that, you know, depending on who you are, you might substitute some of this stuff. They included, which I thought was a nice touch, some snap ring pliers, like the good kind, the straight kind with the, you reach in and grab like this. That is perfect for a lot of applications. A little tiny pair of snips which is good. Side cutters, I use these all the time. Some people controversially use them to cut cables and crimp. We won't talk about those people though because there's a whole video about good cable cutters. And a set of cable cutters that I've never used, which offers a new opportunity. They feel pretty good. They're just normal. There's regular spring here, nothing too fancy. They do have a crimper and they have this. Ah, okay. So if you close this all the way, the lock doesn't actually engage. You have to open it. So that's how they stay closed. And then to get it, ah, and they self open. So that's kind of nice. So if you have the cable cutter closed and you grab the handle, it actually moves out of the way so that they open. They open a little far. Anyway, I get obsessive about cable cutters. Obviously you guys know that. Rotor truing, normal tool. This, I've never used one with these angles before. I've used the kind that are just a fork where the, the gap is actually e like straight out from the handle or a little bit angled from the handle. So this is an interesting tool. This probably gives you a little bit more leverage, but two angles there, a nice long gap for when you need to straighten out a rotor that's been pretty close to the bolts or close to the lock ring. So that's a good addition. Also a good race tool because everybody's always tacoing there rotors in the middle of a race and then their wheel won't spin and they're asking what to do and you're bending it with your hands. So good to have this on hand. Spoke wrench, probably, let's see if it has a number. So this is a 3.3. So it's just kind of like the average size. I'd probably throw a couple more sizes in my box. Piston spreading tool it has two stages. Well, three, it has a layer here and then it actually steps up to a thicker point down here, so a good tool to push things apart when people travel to the race with their wheel out and they pull their brake lever and push their pistons together. You'll be all set for those people. A tiny, tiny little chain tool. Um, this is not the nicest chain tool in the world, but it does seem like it would work. I'm not sure about its compatibility, but it probably they have 12 speed stuff in here, so 
hopefully this uh, is a 12 speed compatible chain tool, but it doesn't have a sliding uh, guide here. So I'm curious about that and I'll have to look it up. But yeah, this chain tool is perfectly fine for the road. If you're using it in the shop, I'd probably I don't know, get a different one, but perfectly good for now. Like I said, kits are always a sort of compromise. Have this bottom bracket and disc brake lock ring tool. So instead of using the separate tool and wrench situation that we are used to with a bunch of different bottom brackets, this is just the typical external 16 notch bottom bracket tool. A round file. I feel like a flat file might have been better, but who knows? A round file might just do two jobs, so instead of having just a flat file, you can also get into stuff. So maybe a round file makes sense, but you do have a file on hand if you need to deburr something. What did I miss? What did I miss? The dental pick. So they did include a dental pick for you. Nice. You have a driver that your cassette tools can go on. So there you go. This is a half inch driver, so you could get sockets if you wanted. So things that seem like they're not in here. Derailleur hanger alignment tool, anything for disc brakes besides spreading out the pads, maybe a better set of Elkies. You may want additional sizes of tools. They only include like a T10 and a T25 in here for torques. You might find that you need a T30 for chain ring bolts or like the uh, T30 for motor mount bolts for e-bikes, things like that. These wrenches are relatively thin, so you may be able to double them as a hub adjustment for like a cone wrench, but there are no cone wrenches in here, which is crazy because the number one thing that I found when I was cataloging all the tools was that every company seems to think that they need to make a full range of cone wrenches. So everybody offers cone wrenches, but there are no actual cone wrenches in this kit, just box wrenches that happen to be pretty thin. So these are like wafer thin box wrenches and I think that that's so that they can serve multiple purposes. But the other thing is like you only have a single of each of these numbers. So a single 17 and a single 15. So you might get into a situation where you feel like you need two of a size and you won't necessarily have it. So now we've got all this stuff and we need to put it in the box. So let's do it. So I just used what they thought was the best layout. As I'm putting the tools in there, I'm thinking of different ways that I would do it and I'm probably going to substitute out some of the tools for other tools and you know make it my own. But the nice thing is that if you look in here, the pallet sits right here, but it has a lot of room in these trays so I can add things like my Abbey Tools derailleur hanger alignment gauge will fit. So nice and small, so it fits right in there. So this pallet actually sits in here over the top, but there's a lot of room, maybe a full inch, inch and a half of space above these tools to cram more stuff in there, which is the mechanic's dream. Put the pallet in, close the doors, shut the box. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I just closed the box, moved it around, and shake it. See what happens. TSA. TSA this box. Put it back up. See what so that all seems to still be there. Pull the pallet out, and that all seems to still be there, so it seems like it, it worked out. So the only thing that's probably going to happen is these things are going to slide around a little bit. But in this case, even if they slide all the way up, most of them will stay there. And you can see that before you start flipping the box. 
So it seems like a pretty good travel case. It also has locking ability so that if you do want to travel with it and check it with TSA, that you can do that as well. Right here on these sides. So, pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. So if you're on the fence about whether to build your own kit or buy a complete kit, hopefully this gives you some idea of like what you get, what you don't get in a complete kit. This is the pro kit. So this is the higher end of their travel kits and this is kind of what you would get from basically any of the pro level kits that you see on the market. In terms of tools, there's always compromises made for travel. When you're trying to fit things in a box, they make certain choices. So like double ending the wrenches instead of giving you individual wrenches. That eliminates half of the mass of the tools that you have. So if you're worried about weight, that's great. If you're not worried about weight and you're more concerned about function, sometimes having individual wrenches is better. So take a look at the Junior Pro Kit. It's awesome. It seems like a really good kit for the money and also able to supplement with this cool box. The other option is Junior makes some cool tools. They also sell that box separately. So if you just really like the box itself, it's not molded for the individual tools. So you could customize it completely. You could just use their box, put all your own tools in it, get the Junior tools you like, get the Abbey tools you like, customize it completely. That's the nice thing about their box. Other companies like Burzman and a few others actually have molded spaces for the tools in the box. So you can't actually stop carrying, I mean, you could stop carrying the tool, but then you'll have a useless molded spot where that tool would have gone that the tool actually snaps into perfectly. So if you don't like the cable cutter, too bad, because the cable cutter goes in a spot and it's the only tool that fits there. So that is the nice thing about this box and a few other boxes, I'm sure Pedro's and Park Tool boxes are also customizable. So if you go with a full custom kit, you're gonna spend more money, but you are gonna get exactly what you want. Or you can start with the baseline, get a good kit that does everything that you need, modify it over time, take tools out of commission, put tools you like more in their spot. Jeez, and I didn't think you were listening. So I hope you found this video useful. You can like it, you can comment below if you have any questions or if you have a cool toolkit that you found that seemed to fill all the holes or a methodology for picking out stuff that you thought was useful for people, please comment below, I love to see them. You can subscribe to the channel for more. As I put out videos, it'll let you know they're coming. I hope to continue the mobile series. I'll keep doing tool reviews. I'll keep making stuff as time allows and as necessity dictates, so. Head over to neutralsupport.net. I've got some cool swag, still hats, aprons, shirts, memberships, everything that you could possibly want and more. Go over there, it's neutralsupport.net. Helps me keep making the videos, helps me pay my bills. So, as always, I hope you guys have a good day.